What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my picks for the top five most underrated football boots slash soccer cleats currently available. Now underrated essentially means this. The popularity of the shoe is not very good, therefore most people would assume that the shoe is not very good when in fact really good shoes that aren't popular are out there, therefore they're underrated. So the criteria in terms of how I went about picking is like this. One, the shoe actually has to be good, and two, it can't be very popular. So something like a Superfly 5 or a Pure Control, two very popular boots, of course can't be underrated for obvious reasons. I also chose to exclude shoes like the Copa Mundial, Mizuno Morelia's, Nike Premier's, kind of these more traditional leather shoes that definitely aren't the most popular, especially amongst the younger generation, but I think everyone kind of understands that they're pretty good, therefore they're not really underrated. I tried to stick to shoes that are truly not that popular but very good and kind of more modern designs in general. So with that in mind, if you guys enjoy top five videos and you wanna see more, be sure to support the video with a like. And without further ado, let's take a look at what I think are the top five most underrated boots that you can get right now. The Under Armour Clutch Fit Force 3.0. Now Under Armour as a brand in its entirety hasn't really been around all that long. They've come an extremely long way in a fairly short period of time and they are a much newer company than their main competitors, mainly Nike and Adidas. But in the soccer football industry, they've really had a hard time establishing themselves. And that's because when they first launched their soccer cleat football boot line, the first couple were honestly pretty sketchy. They've had some hits and misses along the way, but their current Clutch Fit Force 3.0 is a legitimately good product that I personally think is as good as any top end boot from any major brand. I'm not saying Under Armour isn't a major brand, but again, in the soccer cleat community, they're definitely not known as one of the main competitors. Anyways, what's so great about the Clutch Fit Force 3.0 is the upper. It combines their Clutch Fit technology and a Travella synthetic base that allows for a really soft, comfortable feel and really this instantaneous molding to your foot. A lot of people like to use that term when it comes to soccer shoes. And I guess in the case of a leather boot, when they fit really tight and stretch to your foot, that can happen, but with most synthetic shoes, that's not really the type of feel that you get. With the Clutch Fit Force 3.0, you put the shoe on, and as you tie the laces tight, the upper legitimately kind of stretches around your foot without squeezing your foot. It doesn't feel restrictive in any way, and it gives you this perfect instantaneous one-to-one -one wrap, and then as soon as you loosen the laces, it kind of bounces back into its original shape. It's a really interesting idea, and one that works quite well. Normally with stretchy materials for the upper, the shoe can feel quite sloppy. You don't get that sensation here. Out-of-the-box comfort is awesome. There's almost no break-in time at all. The shoe has a tremendously good insole in terms of underfoot cushioning, better than pretty much any other soccer shoe that you can buy. The stud pattern is good. The shoe as a whole is a nice weight, it's a good build quality. There's really not too much you can knock this particular shoe for. So if you're on the market for something that is legitimately underrated and legitimately good and you want something that's different from everybody else, the Under Armour Clutch Fit Force 3.0 is definitely one of those shoes that you might want to take a chance on. The Mizuno Wave Ignitus 4. Now you can make a case for the entire Mizuno brand and all their products as being underrated, but really the underrated aspect of Mizuno is very much a regional thing. If you go in Asian markets, Mizuno is actually going to be one of the more popular brands, but in North America, where it's not very well known and it's not exactly readily available, means that they end up being fairly underrated. The Wave Ignitus 4 though would be my pick out of all the Mizuno products just because it's such a unique shoe that really doesn't compare to anything else out on the market. It's really the last of a dying breed. A lot of people who really like the Predator line from Adidas as well as the Nike T90 models, the Mizuno Wave Ignitus 4 is kind of the last standing shoe of that style that you can actually still buy. It's got a solid construction, it's got a big rubberized striking element. If you buy the Made in Japan variation of the shoe, which is my preference, you get some kangaroo leather on there as well. The build quality with Mizuno is awesome. It has this really unique kind of bladed stud pattern that we really haven't seen since the T90s or uh, the Adidas Predator line when they, those were kind of in their prime. Uh, and again, it's just a solid overall shoe. They're also much lighter than you would expect them to be. And again, I think Mizuno products as a whole are just super, super good. You could make an argument that the Made in Japan Mizuno boots 
are better quality than pretty much anything out there from Nike, Adidas, whatever big brand you want to name. They make some legitimately awesome stuff. And again, I think if you are a fan of older T90 or older Predator models, the Mizuno Wave Ignitus 4, specifically the Made in Japan variation, is definitely a shoe that you should take a look at. The Umbro Velocita 3 Pro. Now this is a brand that I think a lot of people know about, but they've really fallen out of favor over the last eight to 10 years. And again, it's kind of become an issue of availability where you can't really buy Umbro products at most stores and even most online stores, which is a bit of a shame. But the Velocita 3 Pro is a very good shoe. Umbro has always existed. They've pretty much continued to make legitimately good products. But again, they just don't get the notoriety that they perhaps deserve, mainly based around availability. So the Velocita 3 Pro is a really good shoe because it kind of combines, and I don't want to say they're copying anybody here, but it has some elements of the original Hypervenom Phantom 1, mainly in the mesh-based upper, and some elements of the F50 Adi Zero with the sole plate and stud pattern, with a one-piece design and kind of their own quirks and own technologies incorporated into one boot that really offers something completely unique to what you're going to get from other brands at the moment. It's lightweight, it offers good traction, it fits really well, it's comfortable. Touch on the ball from their upper material is really good as well. And it's just a nice overall package that's kind of unique to that shoe from Umbro. So again, if you're looking for something different, the Velocita 3 Pro in kind of the lightweight, thin synthetic speed boot category is definitely a very solid option. The Puma Evo Touch Pro. Now Puma obviously is a very well-known brand. You can consider them part of the big three with Nike and Adidas. But if you're gonna compare them to those very big brands, they are a distant third place in regards to overall popularity. I chose the Evo Touch Pro and not the Evo Power because I feel like the Evo Power is pretty well understood as being a very good shoe even if it isn't the most popular thing. So it's difficult to say that those are underrated, but the Evo Touch Pro, I think is just a shoe that is quite simply misunderstood. It's one of those designs that's so different, so unique, so out there, that a lot of people were quite simply skeptical and because their marketing, I guess, power is not at the same level as what you find from Nike and Adidas, it's a shoe that, People were excited about when it first came out, but since then it's fallen off pretty significantly in terms of overall notoriety and popularity, but it's still a legitimately good product. What's interesting about the Evo Touch Pro is that it has an Evo knit base, so a knitted material for the inside of the shoe with a kangaroo leather shell on top of that. And the overall comfort level, the flexibility, the natural sensation you get from this particular shoe is super unique. It's another one of those shoes that is pretty much ready to go out of the box. You get the softness of leather, which I think is probably the main reason why this shoe wasn't the most popular from the get-go. If they made it synthetic, it might've been a little bit more popular, but the fact that it is a really good quality, super thin kangaroo leather, I really like. It offers a nice touch on the ball, but at the same time, it doesn't feel traditional. It doesn't feel like a classic Copa Mundial or something like that. It has this very modern vibe to it. It has a really interesting cut with the knitted pieces that extend out from the back as well as at the sides. And I think the shoe as a whole looks very cool as well. It's a nice clean design. And again, it has a lot going for it. It's just underrated because most people haven't picked up on it. So again, if you're looking for something unique and what I described to you sounds like something you'd be interested in, the Evo Touch Pro is definitely a shoe that you should take a good hard look at. The Adidas Copa 17.1. Now obviously Adidas being an extremely popular brand, it's difficult to say that anything they make can be underrated. But in the case of the Copa 17.1, I think it's fair to say that most people buying Adidas shoes are not buying the Copa 17.1. And a lot of that is the fault of Adidas themselves and their marketing team. Adidas recently has done an excellent job with marketing, especially with their laceless boots. It gets a lot of attention, but really when the Copa 17.1 came out, they gave it hardly any attention and they launched it alongside a brand new Pure Control, which obviously that took pretty much 99% of the marketing attention. Anyways, the Copa 17.1 has a lot on offer. It features the sole plate, uh, the sprint frame and stud pattern from the A17 top end models, giving it a nice lightweight feel for a more traditionally styled shoe, which kind of has its own unique value to it. And then of course the entire upper being kangaroo leather, really nice touch on the ball. I'm not a huge fan of the one piece tongue design that they've incorporated, but it's a quirk of the shoe and definitely not detrimental to the overall performance. But I think if you want something that has that soft, 
classic leather touch on the ball, but a more modern fit and more lightweight feel, you can definitely get that in the form of the Copa 17.1. Again, it's just one of those shoes that Adidas offers pretty much no marketing attention to. They chose not to put any professional players, any of their main endorsed athletes, in that particular shoe, so it gets no attention on that front either. And again, they release it in every single colorway pack, but it by far gets the least of amount of attention. So again, if you want something that has that soft leather feel, but at the same time is lightweight and has a modern design to it overall, I think that the Copa 17.1 is a really, really solid boot that you definitely should consider. All right, guys, so that is it for what I think are the top five most underrated boots available right now. You could make a case for a few others, but these were the main five that I felt the most strongly about in terms of being truly underrated. Anyways, if you have any questions regarding my picks, Leave them down below in the comments. I'll do my best to get an answer out for you uh, as soon as I possibly can. If you guys enjoyed the top five video and you want to see more, support the video with a like. And if you do want to see more top five videos, leave your suggestions down below in the comment section. I'll definitely take a look at what you guys have to say. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Now other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.